Hi. So this is a little project I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's basically a set of skates to move my machines around the shop. Um, I moved into a new place, and this place has a much larger space to put all my tools. But the thing is that I started bringing in the tools one at a time, and I put them one place, and then I realized that, it, well, I needed to reorganize. So in any case, as, as you guys might know, machine skates are really, really expensive. They can cost like $2,000 for a set, and that's a little bit too rich for my blood. So instead, I decided to see if I could make my own and see if they can move things around for me. I don't really need to move them very, very far. So without further ado, um, here's all the components that I need. Uh, let's see if we can put them together, and then I will show you how I made it all. And there we have our first skate completed. And that is my second skate. So, two down, one more to go. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging. I think I will start with the pivoting portion. So these washers over here are different from these washers over here. The washers that you've been seeing me use so far are ones that I made. These I actually bought, they're hardened washers, and what they do is they go with this thrust bearing over here. So I'm going to put the thrust bearing down, and this thrust bearing does want lubrication. So I'm just going to spin it around, fill it up with oil as I'm doing that. And now that I think about it for good measure, I'll take it out. Put it upside down and lubricate the other side just to make sure that there's plenty of lubrication inside this bearing.
I think what I might do is I might switch to an axle grease afterwards, but I don't have any right now. So I'm going to have to make do with the machine oil that I've been using to lubricate my machines. So we set this guy down. Now the challenge will be <clears throat> to put it where it belongs. It belongs right in this hole. Let's turn it over. And let's see. I guess the washer and the snap ring may already need to be in place before it go through. Let's get that washer in place. Let's see, will the snap ring fit? Snap ring will not fit when it's open, which means I have to do this all while the snap ring is open. So in case you're not seeing what I'm seeing, the two axles of the wheels are actually kind of getting in the way of me being, to, being able to kind of slip in the washer and the slap, snap ring that won't fit this way. I need to put them sideways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them in place. And I'm going to hopefully slide all of this while the snap ring is wide open. And let's take a look. It's a little bit easier if everything wasn't so heavy. This washer is a bit of a tight squeeze. And since they weren't all built to the exact same tolerance, I might just see if I can find another one that's just a tiny bit looser and will go on easier. Let's see. Yeah, this guy Oops. Hopefully I'll be able to use, yeah, I can use this guy over here, maybe. Yeah, I think he'll fit right here. So now that has been captured in here. And you can see this is where the machine's going to sit, and it's going to be able to pivot as I drag it across the garage. All right. put together you just need to handle and uh, it just so happens that I've got one right here I did not expect this to fit very well because it was a really tight squeeze when I was welding it um, I think I went a little bit too tight when I put everything together I should have given it just a little bit of room to make it easier to assemble but if I have trouble putting it in what I will do a threaded rod over here. I'm hoping that this threaded rod is going to help me to separate it just long enough that I can get one part of the, the handle in there. And once I do, then I hope to pivot it all in place. So let's see if we can do that. Now my goal to do this, because everything was so tight, is to use this threaded rod and to put two nuts inside of it and then kind of just separate the nuts until it holds the two sides apart. So here's one nut. Here's the second nut. I'm just putting this in a little bit so it doesn't kind of wobble all over the place while I'm working. And now let's see if I can split this open a little bit using these two nuts. So all I gotta do is tighten them. Theoretically, as I'm tightening them, it's pushing these two sides apart. And if what I say is true, 
It may have been enough, or maybe I need a tiny bit more, but I should be able to fit this guy in at some point. Oh, okay. You know what? I'm going to give it just a tiny bit more so I don't find it. There's no reason to find it. is that once I have one of these sides in, I should be able to just pivot the arm back into place. Let's see. Okay, come on. Let's try to get it lined up right. Okay. Now that this side is in here, I can go and remove my threaded rod. I said remove my threaded rod. Now, ideally, I would put some kind of um, lock washer or something in here, but I'm not sure that I have enough. This is the longest bolt that I could find. I'm not sure if it's quite long enough to give me some room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and replace these two bolts later on with slightly longer bolts so that I can either get a lock nut or a lock washer in there just to make sure that nothing comes off. I guess another thing I could do is just drill a hole right here and put a cotter pin through it and call it a day. and tight, definitely no room for any kind of lock nut or lock washer. nuts right in here so I don't lose them. And this one's not cooperating. Okay. And there you have it. My three machine skins. Fully assembled, mounted, 
hand, if uh, you'll pardon the pun, they are ready to roll. So um, I'm going to post some videos, either one or more videos, on how I built these. I already posted a very, very brief video talking about the fact that I used the technique that I saw to widen the holes. These are fender washers over here, and what I did is I widened the holes on them so that they would fit here. Um, a lot of the rest of the work was mill work to basically bore out really big holes for these shafts over here, and then for the axles themselves, they were done on the lathe. Um, this last bit over here is from some uh, C-channel that I cut into these shapes over here, and then I welded them on. So there's some, also some welding over here. You'll notice that there are like four little squares over here, and the purpose of it for, the, for them is to hold the machine captive in some of the gaps. So either here, if it's going to be, if the, if the machine is going to ride, uh, or rather these skates are going to ride on the side of the machine, then really what I want is I want the machine to be captive over here. On the other hand, if I'm going to put the, um, the machine, or the skates rather, in the back of the machine, then I really want them to be captive over here so that the machine doesn't just slide off the skate as I'm yanking it around. And one last option, of course, is that you can actually have the corner of the machine sitting right over here, and so it's going to be braced against one of these um, from both sides, from both the back end and the side. And so there we have it. Um, thanks for watching.